Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing about the important MCQs on Java. So in basically this MCQs would be dealing with the Java drivers, abstract class, interfaces and the final keyword and some of the questions of exceptions. So we will be clearing the concepts along with we will be solving the questions also. So before moving on, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe it and if you are already a subscriber, please share and give a like. Let's move on to the video. Okay, so this is a first question and this question is about abstract classes and we have to tell that which of the following uh, statements are false. Okay, now let's see what are the abstract class, uh, what are the properties of the abstract class, then points to remember about the abstract class. Okay, now what is an abstract class? The first an abstract class is a class that must be declared with the abstract keyword. That is for class A you should write abstract class A. So this like this it should be declared. So it should be a class with abstract keyword. Okay. An abstract class and ha can have abstract as well as non-abstract methods. So here we are talking about two types of method. One is the abstract method and another is the non-abstract method. Okay. Now what actually is a non-abstract methods? Non-abstract methods are the methods that, that have a complete method body. That means the method is complete in itself. Abstract methods are the methods that are not complete. That is, they will end with a semicolon, equal to zero and semicolon. So these types of methods are called abstract method. That is, that method has not been implemented. Those methods which are not implemented are known as abstract methods. Methods which have the full logic, a full um, method body, they will known as non-abstract method. So abstract class is a combination of abstract as well as non-abstract methods. Even if a class does not have non-abstract methods, then also we can write the keyword abstract in the front of the class. It won't give you any error. Okay. Next is an abstract class cannot be instantiated. It does uh, means the objects of the extra uh, class cannot be made. So abstract class we cannot make the objects, but they have constructors as well as static methods. So abstract class can have non-abstract methods, it can have abstract methods, it can have static methods and also it can have constructors. It can also have final method which will force the uh, subclass not to change the body of the method. So this final method, this final keyword will be discussing in the further questions. So these are the properties of the abstract class. Now let's move on to the question. Okay. if if any class extends this abstract class, that is suppose class B, it extends class A, then the methods which are abstract in the abstract class, they must be defined in the child class. So this is one more property. So let's see, if you derive an abstract class, that is if you extend an abstract class and do not implement all the abstract methods, means all the methods here which are abstract are not implemented then the derived class that is the class B it has to be abstract yes it is true okay next is all abstract classes can have constructors yes they can have constructors they can have static methods they can have non abstract methods they can even have final methods okay so this is also true a class can be made abstract without any abstract method. This also I told you. This is also true. So all are true. No statement is false in this question. Next. Okay. In this we will be talking about Java drivers. So there are generally four types of drivers. Ja type 4 JDBC drivers. So in JDBC we have four types of drivers. Let's see the description of those drivers and we can uh, see how it is. Uh, what driver 4 would do, type 4 driver would do, okay. So we have this four types of drivers. In this, the type 1 and type 2 drivers, they are not written in Java, okay, they are not written in Java. So therefore, because they are not written in Java, these two drivers are not portable. So you can remember this also, uh, they can ask which drivers are not written in Java and which drivers are written in which language, okay. Whereas type 3 and type 4 these drivers are written in Java so our first option for type 4 is wrong so it is written in Java it is not written in C++ okay now because they are written in Java these two drivers are portable drivers okay these are portable drivers okay now what is type 1 driver 
type 1 driver is JDBC ODBC connectivity driver. It is a bridge driver between the JDBC and ODBC. It is sometimes called universal driver because it can connect to any type of database. So that's why it is called uni universal driver because it can connect to any type of database. The type 2 driver is called the native API driver. That is it can do anything in the it requires a native library or a middleware server. So it is type 2. It requires an intermediate layer. Okay. So this intermediate layer is for type 2. It is for not for type 4. Okay. Now let's see type 3 driver is a network protocol driver. So this driver type 3 it will communicate through sockets. The type 4 driver it is a thin driver. It, it What does it do is it uh, converts the JDBC function call into API not native to DBMS. So any API which is not native to DBMS it converts JDBC function calls into API. So it does not require any native library and a middleware server. So this is type 3 so it is not type 4 and it, is, it does not communicate to communicate through sockets. So it can tra uh, translate JDBC function call into API not native to DBMS. So also we can say that it does not require any intermediate layer or any middleware server. So there is no client side or the server side installation. So nothing is intermediate is required in type 4 drivers. So you can remember type 1, type 2 not written in Java. Type 3 and type 4 it is written in Java. Therefore type 3 and type 4 are portable drivers and the basics you can remember. Next. Which of these is a super class of all errors and exceptions in Java language? So the, it ha you have to remember is there is no uh, logic behind it. It is the throwable class. It is the super class of all errors and exceptions. So you can remember all errors and exceptions. They come under throwable class. Next. What is the use of final keyword in Java? Okay. See, we have the final keyword. Okay, in Java what we have, we have a class, we have a method and we have a variable. So we will be discussing the role of the final keyword when it is used with the class, when it is used with the method, when it is used with the variable. Okay, now first the class. When the final keyword is used with the class, so uh, that class cannot be inherited. Suppose we I have final class a okay now any other class class B it want to extend class A okay so this line this line would give an error because when a class is defined as final it cannot be inherited so final keyword in classes it, allow, it disallows the class to be inherited okay the second is when the final keyword is used with the method. Okay, when the final keyword is used with the method, the method cannot be overridden. Okay, and the third is when the final keyword is used with the variable, then you can assign. Suppose we have, I I have said int. Sorry, uh, final int i is equal to ten. Okay, I have did this. Again, if I want to assign some value to i, this line would give me an error because it is declared as final. When a variable is declared as final, at that time, only once you can assign the value. You cannot assign another value for i. So that is for variable. For method, suppose I have a method final uh, xyz, xyz method. So I have some thing over here. Okay, so this method it cannot be overridden in the child class because this is final. Final means it cannot be changed. When a class is final, it cannot be inherited. When a method is final, it cannot be overridden. When a variable is final, it cannot be assigned any other value. Now let's see. When a class is made final, a subclass of it cannot be created. This is true. When a method is made final it cannot be overridden okay this is also true when a variable is final it can be assigned value only once this is also true so all of the above is the usage of final keyword in the language java let's move to the next in java when we implement an interface method so what is an interface interface is uh, it is like a 
abstract class or it is a, a class with all abstract methods see all the methods in the interface would be abstract okay it won't have any non abstract method so when we implement an interface it must be declared as public since interface contains all the unimplemented methods so those methods has to be implemented uh, in some child interfaces in some child classes so that uh, some logic has to be made so for that it has to be declared public because if it is private it cannot be extend uh, it cannot be modified by other classes or other interfaces so that's why the answer is public next okay what is runtime polymorphism so runtime poly um, polymorphism it deals with uh, method overriding so generally runtime polymorphism is deals with runtime overriding that is overriding of a method with same signature same signature means the name of the method should be same the written type would be should be same and also the number of parameters so everything should be same name written type name and the number of parameters everything in the method should be same so uh, that is called runtime polymorphism so in this the answer is one a runtime polymorphism is a process in which a call to a override method overridden method is resolved at runtime rather than at compile time so always remember runtime polymorphism uh, polymorphism means overriding it is not overloading okay it is overriding whereas overloading is done at compile time okay and overriding is done at runtime so you can remember that overloading at compile time overridden at runtime so runtime polymorphism is overriding next what is awt stands for awt is abstract window toolkit so you can remember it there is nothing to explain next which of the uh, these can be used to fully abstract a class from its implementation that is what i said uh, when a class is completely abstract it is known as interface so it is interface interface contains all uh, methods as abstract so it contains every abstract all method abstract so that means it is a fully abstract class a fully abstract class can be called as an interface so interface is the answer for this question you can uh, remember it next okay this question we already discussed interface it should always be public because the interface contains all the methods as abstract that is those methods has to be implemented in some of the upcoming uh, interfaces or uh, upcoming uh, classes so that's why they has to be made public because only then they can access it next which of these keywords are used by a class to use an interface defined previously so if we already have an interface and the class wants to use that interface it should use the keyword implements okay between two classes it is extends between a class and the interface it is implements so the answer is implements that this class will implement the unimplemented method of this interface that is the abstract methods of these this inter interface so it is implements next when does exception in java arises in code sequences so exception it generally arise in runtime always arise in runtime so uh, exception would be always arising in runtime okay in a code sequence exception would be in runtime you have to remember that next which of these keywords is not a part of exception handling so when in runtime the exception arises exception arises so there has to be some method to handle those exceptions so what are the keywords the keywords which are used for exception is a try catch these both are sometimes called try catch block finally throw and throws okay so these are automatic exception handling and throw and throws these would be uh, manual exception handling so the keyword thrown is not there so this is not a part of exception handling next which of these keywords must be used for monitoring exceptions so whenever a uh, exception we know that in a part of code suppose in in line 21 suppose in a program line 21 to 28 in these lines the exception would arise so what we would do is we'll put them in a try block we know that in this line the exception would be there so for monitoring exception we put it in the try block so this is the try is the answer for monitoring exceptions 
Next is which of these keywords must be used to handle the exception thrown by a try block. Suppose we know that from line 1 to 10 the exception would arise. So what I'll do is I'll put line 1 to 10 in the try block. Okay. If some exception arise in this try block it would be handled by the catch block. So it is catch. It, this is done automatically. I have just put the code in the try block and when there is some exception it would be handled by the cache block. So it is done by the compiler. Next, which of these keywords is used to manually throw an exception? So if we want to throw an exception manually, so we use the keyword throw. Throw keyword is used to handle the exceptions manually. So this was all about the MCQs of Java. Hope you liked the video and you understood whatever concepts I told you. So if you like the video, please click the like button and do subscribe. Thank you.